All right, welcome everybody uh, to another episode of Stories of a Colorful World, Authors Conversations. Uh, Stories of a Colorful World is an online bookstore and we focus on increasing access to children's books, but specifically children's books that focus on BIPOC or Black Indigenous people of color uh, characters because we know that representation matters. So I am Vanessa Mitchell, and I am joined by Kanika Mobley, and Kanika and I are the co-founders of Stories of a Colorful World. And tonight we are super excited to have join us Kari Luna. And Kari is a, sorry, Luna is a graphics designer and the creator of the Kids for Black Lives coloring book. So welcome Luna. So we're just going to start out by asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Let's, where do I start? Um, I am from Bermuda and Dominican Republic. My dad's Dominican, my mom's Bermudian. I was born here, raised there and here and all over. Um, and we was discussing a little earlier how I got into all of this. Um, I got into fashion first. My grandmother was a seamstress on the side and my uncle was a designer, not trained at all. Like he was just an artist that will pick up crayons and pencils and make masterpieces. There's pictures of me as a baby and I'm like, that looks like a photograph. And it was just breathtaking. So I've had, you know, their their knowledge from young and um what else i got into art really young and my mom saw that my sister was artistic as well and my mom was like i don't know i'm not artistic at all not an artistic bone in my body so i want to move them back to the states and from there she just put a blueprint together her and my dad of how we were going to get to what we wanted to accomplish so from I think junior high school, we kind of knew what high school I was gonna go to, which I went to Fiorello LaGuardia High School for the arts, which is like the fame school. Yeah. So we didn't just have our academics, we also did art every single day, um, which was great because I got to experience fashion and painting and sculpture and everything you could think of. Um, and then from there, I got into the University of the Arts London, um, where I went, did fashion there. I, the first year I went in thinking I was gonna be a big fashion designer and I didn't wanna sew. And I was just like, <laughs> this is not my thing. And mind you, I was good at it, but it was the most boring, tedious thing for me. Mm. And mind you, my grandmother loved it, right? That's so all she did, she made clothes. And I was like, I just wanna draw. Um, and so some, one of the teachers was like, did you ever think of fashion illustration? And I was like, I don't even know what that is. Um, so I got exposed to a whole new area and I got in actually on the spot, which I was like speechless. I was like, this is, it was crazy. I had like two weeks to get my portfolio together. And I was like, hadn't slept in two weeks. It was insane, but I got in there, finished up, um, my degree, uh, doing fashion illustration and visual culture. And it was great because I got to do both of my loves. Like I said, like I never could figure out how to put my love for culture and my ethnicity and my background and my people and like movements and what I wanted to kind of give back to the community. I couldn't figure out how to do that with fashion. Um, I was able to do that in school. But once I got out, I was like, how is this going to blend? Um, so from there, I went straight into like the fashion world, interned at Marc Jacobs and a bunch of other places, Tory Burch, um, and then ended up doing, working for Fashion Snoops, which is a fashion forecasting company. Hmm. Um, I started it up with uh, a section with one of my bosses doing the youth and culture section. So again, I was able to kind of merge the two, kind of. Um, where we were able to influence companies like Foot Locker and Timberland and things like that and bringing more culture ideas into their companies. Um, from there, I worked at, I was decided, I was like, you know what, I kind of want to go a little bit more corporate. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was like, that's where the money is. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that do not go run after money. You will not be happy. <laughs> I'm telling you that now. Um, but I ended, ended up going to a company where I designed for Nickelodeon and Disney and MGA and a bunch of different brands there. Um, and then COVID hit and they were like, we are firing all of you. <laughs> and I was didn't know what to do. I had, like I said, we had a plan since 11 12 years old there was a blueprint we knew how we were going to get there and all of a sudden there was this halt and I didn't know what I was going to do now so I was like okay what is happening and then like we were discussing earlier I was into protesting I was I was definitely one of those kids on the bridge like my parents are like, girl, don't get arrested. I'm not coming to get you. <laughs> but it was it was a big thing for my family. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're not there. My mom was like, oh no. But my my dad was really into us, you know, understanding our rights and understanding what we were fighting for. And um, even before, like even little, we were before we could even watch cartoons. My dad had on the news at all times and different stations too. Like even ones that we didn't particularly agree with. He said, if you can't argue, you can't argue uh, anything if you don't know what the opposition believes in. So we were constantly made to understand what was happening. Um, so when I got fired, I not fired, I got let go because of COVID, but I keep saying fired and my mom goes, you didn't get fired. <laughs> it felt that way. <laughs> you know, it, it, hurt. it hurt bad. I was like, what is happening? Um, and it was an ego check too, because I guess even though it had nothing to do with me personally, right. I had never not been great. Like it was one of those where I was like, no, 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 my parents, you know, I'm first generation, I have to get it. And um, it was one of those that was out of my hands and not being able to control it also was something that I had to learn this year as well. But um with all the protests happening and, you know, people not having jobs and not getting, you know, any financial help and things like that. There were a lot of people suffering and I didn't know what to do. And I just kind of was like, I can't be it. My parents asked me not to be out there because of COVID. And I felt like I wasn't doing my part because a lot of times we feel like if we're not out there, we don't, we're not doing anything like almost, mm -hmm. Or I, it was a shameful, I kind of want to say for me, I felt a little ashamed that I wasn't out there with my own voice and being out there in the streets with everyone. Um, and then I saw this picture of this little boy on his mother's shoulders with a sign and I just literally started crying and I drew the photo, printed it and my cousin started coloring it. And I'm just like, ding, like it just made sense. And I was like, she gets, like, she was getting it and asking questions. And I was able to speak to her and, and I was telling her mom about it. Cause I was like, am I overstepping my bounds? Cause it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough subject to speak, especially right. to very little children. And you feel like, is it my place and things like that. And it, her mom loved it. Everyone loved it. And I started sharing with other friends that had kids and they were like, oh my God, we, we need something like this. So that's how these illustrations started coming about and then started creating a book. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So COVID was a blessing in disguise. Right. Right. Beyond, I, if, I, if I could tell you how I had anxiety, depression, I'm telling you, that's why I tell people now, do not chase the, like sometimes it's great. You can have it on your resume that you work for these big companies but it was terrible and I, I was miserable I was like this can't be what working is right like mm -hmm. I've done all this work to be stuck almost feels like every day you're just on a, a hamster wheel mm -hmm. and you start losing that joy and that creativity and what makes you an artist it all just started being taken away because you're just doing it for the cash um and it I, I literally prayed that day and I was like, I don't know what you got planned, but it may be something because I this is not this is not what I have planned. So right. I'm I'm hoping that you have something planned because this ain't it. <laughs> so, um yeah, so yeah, it was beyond a blessing. I've never been happier. So 
Absolutely. Yeah. So after you kind of like created that first image, like what kind of was your inspiration or like your, um, your almost like a goal in like creating other images? Well, I actually spoke to one of my friends who helped me put this together. His name's Justin Kwan. Um, and I was like, yo, he saw the picture and he was like, yo, that's such a great idea. And he was, we were talking a lot about it because he's Chinese and he was discussing like things that were happening due to COVID. Obviously we're seeing some of the stuff come into fruition now. Um, and, you know, a lot of, you know, the individuals breaking up, you know, their stores and stuff like that. And those discussions were being had even amongst adults. And we were like, imagine if we're having these conversations, how can little kids understand what's happening? Mm -hmm. And so he, I pretty much moved up to his house for like a couple of weeks and was just working right on that and decided that we were going, he was like, I'm, if you need my help, I'm here. You can be downstairs. I was literally in his basement. He had a fully furnished basement and I was just down there working. And um, he was, you know, he was like, if I'm, I'm here if you need me. So um, I decided to make a book and I was like, how am I going to get this funded? How is this going <laughs> to um, I was like, I can have as many ideas, but we do not have the capital. <laughs> so um, he was like, how about Kickstarter? And I was like, oh, okay. So uh, I did some research into Kickstarter. I had a few friends that were videographers and other things. And they were like, this is how you do it. This is what you should do. This is how it should look. And I was like, all right, this is perfect. It's my creative space. This is what I love to do. And we did everything on Kickstarter. Um, and yeah, I put in for, I think it was like 5,000 I thought I needed. And I was like, I think 5,000 would be fine we ended up getting seven, uh, 7,000. And I was like, thank God we actually got seven. Cause <laughs> like, you don't think about things that you need, right? Like what about mailing? Yeah. I never thought about mailing things. Right. <laughs> like that costs money. <laughs> um, but yeah, we did really well. I ended up being able to speak at, um, my university for, um, yeah, for being an alumni and speaking about my project and, was in the Bermuda newspaper and it was like boom all of a sudden and I had so much support and so many people were writing me on there saying oh this is amazing I've been looking for something for my kids and I was like okay this is all making sense um it's not just me who thinks it's necessary but I'm hearing other people that I do not know saying that they're waiting for this project so we created the book I think I have it here let me see yeah and um yeah we i just put it out and put it out on kickstarter it did well and i've been sending them out ever since <laughs> so now we have our official website up and you can buy it on there it doesn't have to be on kickstarter anymore and um yeah it was it, it's been moving since then <laughs> So you kind of talked about, you know, the situation you were in, in the midst of COVID and all the things that were going on in the world. Um, so the opportunity and the, I mean, I think it's perfect for where we are today. And you talked about sort of, you know, exposing the book to family and friends, but what is the message that you want for kids to get out of, you know, when looking at these images, right? So you talked about them kind of asking questions, but for what the kind of things that I've heard like my friends speak to their kids and what I've always wanted for the book is that a lot of these topics like I said before are difficult to have even amongst adults um and a lot of kids don't understand that they have the the voice they can have a voice whether to whether to draw something and send it to their grandma and to put it on the fridge and that that'd be a conversation starter or to actually write something or write or even to go out there yourself with your parents saying, hey, I want to go see what's going on. I saw so many videos of kids doing their own little protests outside their house and things like that. Like, you don't realize what is going to spark someone else's interest in what's going on. Um, even their own little voices, you know, like so many little kids had pictures and signs outside of their house and putting up Black Lives Matter in their window. And it's just small things that 
others, especially with social media, people are taking photos and that's seeing, millions of people are seeing something that one small child did. And I think as children, a lot of times, and I know like coming from a West Indian background is like, know your place right so it's like and a lot of times you feel like you don't have a voice you have your this is your place and like you're a child and I'm so happy that my parents encouraged me to actually have an opinion and ask questions and so I just wanted this this book to be kind of a tool to be a conversation starter for parents and kids to be able to discuss and ask questions and even if they're hard questions they're still seeing kids that look like them and know that it's an, a, something that they can do as well so yeah I agree I think that with all the events it was hard to shield children from what was happening out in the world right so you couldn't at some point avoid especially for our black and brown kids yeah we couldn't avoid the conversation. So certainly having a book like this can help. For sure. Them. And I think we it never, for us, I think it's never really shielded for us, right? We, this is very, this is our normal day. This is our normal conversation. This is happening to our family, our friends. I think for a lot of other races, I wanted to make sure that they had it too. Because again, I've always been the only black artists in a design room or the youngest or being the youngest black and female like and then I'm not even just black I'm black and black latin so it's like you're just hitting all these boxes <laughs> and you're gonna represent everyone right and and it's great because I've had a lot of people that have been very supportive but they have said to me like I have not known what to say to my children what's appropriate how how do I make this clear for them especially if there's not something that they're going to personally go through their friends will um and I just want to create a tool that's not just for us as well but for other kids to see because I feel like if they're seeing images of kids that look like that look like us mm -hmm. then they're gonna say that's normal. You know what I mean? That's the, we're not different. This is beautiful. I'm gonna color them. I'm gonna make this beautiful, and it's gonna be something I show pride in as well. And I think if we start creating ideas where we can actually share and they can understand from young that we're all there's not much that is difference between us. You know, I think it would actually help us in a lot of these issues because this didn't happen overnight like I when I told this story about like my grandmother someone else I said it's so strange to me. not strange but interesting to me my grandmother used to have to go through a door for only colored people to go through that's what my grandmother my grandmother is 70 she just had a birthday a few days ago I think she almost say like 76 78 77 it's not that long ago so for us to know that I can be that person in the room and I can do this and I can have a voice and I can go out there, but we're still having a lot of the same issues that were happening back then. There's something that needs to change and we can't just sweep it under the rug. So we have to create tools like this so that our kids understand from young. And how do you, you said you've had a lot of conversations with like different parents. So how do you, or what advice would you give for parents in like using um, your coloring book as a tool? Yeah, um, a lot of, actually one of my bosses that actually started um, those sections for culture and youth in at one of my jobs, she was saying to me, her kids, I believe one is six and the other one's four. Mm -hmm. And she was saying, I've been saying as much as I can, I've been buying books and, you know, but I still don't feel like I'm saying the right thing. And, I, and it's different for every for every person because some people are, you know, from the city. So they're a little bit more open-minded where then there's some individuals that, you know, but I guess what I was taught being multiracial and being around a lot of different individuals from, you know, depending on what school I was in or moving from Bermuda to here and different schools, is more of we can still celebrate who we are without mm -hmm. it you know being detrimental to someone else's community you know like it's not harmful for us to be who we are and to see the beauty in ourselves it's not and that's not bad you know and i think a lot of times and especially right now is that there's a separation because people feel like if we're getting i guess greater in our communities that is going to pull down theirs 
and doesn't have to be that way, you know? So that's one topic. Um, there's just so many, so many, <laughs> so many topics. Oh. Unfortunately, 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 but um, it's just even from skin tone to everything, there's so many different topics we can discuss. Like even like the crayons I created, I made sure that they all were different flesh tones and that kids can say like, just if you're black, you're not just look at where, how many different shades, you know, like we don't have to be one shade. If in even like when we looked at the crayon boxes, I was so happy that Crayola, Crayola put out their boxes. And I actually only buy those boxes to make my crayons because before my friend was like, what did that? He goes, when I was trying to make um, an Asian color, I had to use yellow and peach and put them together. And I was like, I don't even know what I colored myself at the time because I was just like, I'm, I, and especially being from Bermuda and, and all my family's dark skin. I was like, I'm brown. And my mom goes, girl. <laughs> but there was no color. So it was like, now <laughs> you can actually, you know, play with the color. I think I have some, uh, I have some here. Like that's one. And then I have like a marbled one and then like other shades as well. So, and they're all like puzzle pieces because we're all, when you put them all together, they create one box and they all, so it's like there's some symbolism in there. Love and that. then uh, we it. put together some like hearts that, I don't know if you guys can see. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, some hearts that are marbled with different flesh tones and things like that as well. Um, you know, some symbolism in there, but um, just something that kids, you know, I know they already have crayons, but they probably don't have the Crayola um, set at home so they can have that to color as well. So, I was gonna ask you too, right? So for, for the critics, cause I've heard this that, you know, for us, you were right that, you know, we can't avoid these topics. We can't avoid, um, this, is, this is nothing new for us, right? And so I've heard people say that these topics are too heavy for kids, right? Like this is too much for, for, for children and thinking about like the crayons and, and representation and why, you know, having those things are important, but what is the key for you? So what, what kind of made you say, so first is the images, second is the crayons, but why is that so incredibly important to you to get that message out um, to the world? Um, for personally, so, go a little deep yeah. Take us there. <laughs> my my mom is actually black and white she identifies as mixed or more black because she was raised only black um there ha I have experienced not fitting in molds very young and having like I said having to take on every mold when not being included in any and I love my parents for, even my father is Dominican. A lot of, you hear a lot of um, young Dominicans talk about now that they're black and or they call her Afro-Latin, mm -hmm. right? But that's not, that wasn't a thing for older generations. My father always believed that. Like my father would fight with people and be like, you black, okay? I don't know what you think you are, <laughs> but you black. And I think for me, this, these topics were always present. And I guess I didn't have these small tools. You know, I had, thankfully, parents that instilled in me that you are who you are, you are the makeup that you are, and you're beautiful for who you are, and you can take from all these different areas. And even with not being accepted by certain parts of my nationality, understanding that that doesn't make you less than either. You know, like just because they don't want to accept you, that's okay. And it doesn't make other people that, cause you, I didn't have, I've heard a lot of people say things like they've had an experience with one person or a few people from a certain race and all of a sudden it's negative. Or even like when I went to England to school, there was such a separation between um, like the blacks and whites and things like that. Um, I think for me and then being an American and they didn't know where I came from. They were like, what are you? And I was just like, Oh, that question. Right. 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 I was like, well, I'm black. Um, but 
it's like they're like no but you look and I've had everything like I know this is a kid's topic but I've even been on a date where someone said to me you're really intelligent for a mixed race girl wow so it's like if you don't have these conversations when kids are little when they get older they will not know how to deal with it Mm -hmm. it's always like my my grandmother I'm sorry I'm gonna lose my voice my grandmother is um really old school Christian like church double time on Sunday um (laughs) so um and she always says train up a child in the way that they should go and it's true like if you don't implement these ideas when kids are young and give it to them in a way that they can handle and like you said there were so many things that kids couldn't escape them this year but if you had tools like these books behind you and things like that if they had tools that could help them they can start understanding a little bit more of what's happening instead of just being oh my god I don't understand what's going on this it's it seems like everybody's fighting everyone's yelling but they don't really understand why everyone's, you know, yelling and fighting and, and having this type of conversation. So I hope that answered that question. It did. It did. And I love that. <laughs> I, I absolutely agree with you. Okay. Cause I mean, I've heard that too. Like I've, I've heard everything. I have been in full blown discussions. Um, and I think I've had so many discussions. I think sometimes it's a blessing and a curse sometimes to be someone that um, people, everyone can feel like they speak, can speak to me. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like everybody feels like they can relate to me. Right. But then it's, um, I get, sometimes I've had to correct people and say like, well, that's actually not true. And, you know, and I, or even bringing people together. Like I remember in college when I went to the university out there, I was like, Oh, I'm going to party with this, this person. And they're like, oh, she's white. I'm not going to go. Or she's black. I'm not going to go. And I'm like, no, no, no. We all going together. Like (laughs) being from New York and going to LaGuardia and being in this melting pot, it was more like I had friends that were every single shade. And it was just more like, all right, why are we separate? Do you understand why we're separating? Is that a thing? Like, how can we change that? And by the end of it, sometimes they were hanging out without me. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> but it's cool. Like, that's fine. You know, I'm, it's, it's one of those right. where it's sometimes, like I said, when I was young, I felt like I didn't belong. And then as I've gotten older, I realized that was actually something that was going to assist as I got older mm-hmm. um, in a way that I could understand how it feels to be an outcast or how it feels to you know not you know be seen and I said I've always been the only black person the youngest and a female in a lot of these rooms and so a lot of these struggles that in the beginning I'm like god I don't know why you got me going through this Mm -hmm. it was all just to help me out so I can understand and be able to create for other individuals that are going to go through it as well absolutely so it sounds like you started with one image and then it grew into a whole coloring book. And a- now you're creating um, Luna Bound Publishing. Yeah. So yeah, Luna Bound Publishing is going to be Luna Bound and Luna Bound Kids. Uh, Luna Bound Publishing is going to be for any individual. Exp- I really want to work with young um black and latin artists that want to bring their stories i think it's important to constantly have you know images and conversations with kids that a lot of stuff we don't see that looks like us like it's been nice to see this year an explosion of artists feeling that they can get their voice out and put their stories out Mm -hmm. like you guys how you guys created when when our mutual friend jen told me about you guys i was like oh my god it's amazing no one has this like this isn't a thing like, we needed i wish i had this when i was little um but it is something that i want to continue and i know that it's not always going to be me creating these stories i want to actually bring to someone else's story to life um so what's the best way to do it and I've already put in all the hard work with knowing where to print and how to do this and I'm telling you my mom was like you're a pro now and I was like listen I wanted it to happen it was gonna happen I was gonna put in that time 
So now I can help someone else that has this, um, has this dream and hopefully it can inspire our kids as well. So do you have any other coloring books in the works? Are there anything specific that's in the works? Well, um, we have, so we're going to kind of split up the year with Luna Bound Kids and Luna Bound um, more adult books. Our other book that I was working on during COVID as well, I actually started, I think it was like today or tomorrow, like one of these days, I actually started it last year. Um, like I think I was speaking to you guys earlier, I was in this fashion industry where you felt like you knew everybody, but it was so shallow. It was like, you didn't really know them. You knew who they worked for, what they had, like what, like what, what movers and shakers were around them. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I know this person. I know I can get to this person. Or it was, it was like almost like networking at all times, but you never really knew the individual. Right. And um, as you can see, I'm a talker. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like, I actually want to get to know these individuals. So it started with like social media and a few people that I knew through the industry. And I started interviewing them and I created poetry and art from there. Um, and so that's going to be a, a book coming out. Um, all the artwork and poetry right now was on that Instagram, which I'll share. I, I'll send it to you guys later. Mm -hmm. um, and then for Luna Bound Kids, we have a section on the website where I've been creating um, artwork for kids to color for free. Um, I understand a lot of kids got the book, but some kids, especially with this, these hard times, a lot of parents can't afford to get the book right now, or, you know, they've already purchased the book. They're not going to purchase the same book again, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted them to something that they can constantly go in and download. And especially with um, a lot of the hate crimes that are happening, especially like yesterday right. and things like that, mm -hmm. I put up two new ones um, and for the Asian community because that conversation needs to be had as well. A lot of, especially living in New York City, we grew up together. We grew up in the same neighborhoods, you know? So that discussion needs to be had as well. So um, it doesn't just stop with just kids for black lives. It, it really wants, I really want equality um, for all of us. And it, it's important to have these conversations no matter who we are and everyone should be having them. So those two coloring pages are up. Um, we have a few more. There will be more coming up. Any big holiday um, that is something full, that has a, that we need to be discussing. That I feel like a lot of times in our American books we don't discuss, <laughs> or we have two sentences and it's move right along. Mm -hmm. um, I will be sharing on there just so that we can make that a conversation piece again. Just like the book, I want all of these to just be tools, whether they're you're purchasing them or if they're free I still want it to be a tool for us because at the end of the day it's only going to make our next generation better and you know hopefully us as well absolutely we this is definitely a, a, a good time for it yeah I mean it's weird because I saw so my mom I was like I really wish I didn't have to put this book out you know if that makes any sense like I, it's, I was like, are we still going through this? Like, is this still something that we need to be putting and making, making tools? Um, but that's the reality that we're in. And hopefully we can only hope that we can do what we have to do and, and um, use our creative voices so that we, the next generation doesn't have to put out these books and they can just put out books that look like their kids or look like their next door neighbor and it won't be something that has to be a tool it can just be a beautiful book for kids to read and that it's normal to see like like you guys said you guys saw something that was needed and you put it out there but the fact that it was even needed mm -hmm. was an issue and you guys went and used your creative juices to solve that issue I hope for the next generation and the generations to come that those issues are no longer needed they're normalized so that we have a whole bunch of these amazing bookstores that feature, you know, black and brown and indigenous and, and whoever, and it's normalized. 
um, and not something that we have to, you know, say, listen, it's not out there. I'm going to create it, you know, so. not a niche. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We hope so too. <laughs> Listen, but let, let I want you guys to lead it, you know? <laughs> Be there, front lines <laughs> with the light and everything. <laughs> so you created this kind of like with your younger cousin who started the coloring. So like once you created the whole book, what was um your cousin's well, reaction? You no know what? I, I had to check myself at the door because she got the book and she's three, right? Okay. She got the book and she's like, wow. Ooh. Then she took some color, some colors and just went like this. <laughs> said, all that work I just did. All that work. <laughs> but I was missing the point because she was actually speaking about, she said, oh, I remember one of them, she goes, oh, she looks like me. And I, 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 I was like, oh my, that's all I needed. This is it. If I don't sell one book, that's all I needed. Um, and so when that happened, I should have just been happy with that. But she then took a whole entire crayon <laughs> and went like this to the page. <laughs> but, okay. She's a fan. Is that not what this is for? Right. The color is book. Right. I said I put lines on there for a reason. <laughs> but you know what's funny? Even though they're for kids, a lot of the sales that we made were for people, for, for adults. Yeah. I, yeah. And I actually did an interview with someone else and they were like, um, is this embarrassing? I said I sent it for a kid, but I didn't color with it. <laughs> And then I just got off the phone with my god sister. She bought it from my godson. And I said, oh, did you like the book? I asked myself, like, oh, did you get your book? Because your mom got it. And I know she probably didn't give it to you. And she goes, I'm actually going to buy my own, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, because she's like, I think he's going to color on the pages that I want to color. And so I'm going to buy my own. So, I mean, I love that. it's proven yeah. that coloring is relaxing. It's actually right. puts you in a state that's almost like meditation. And so if you can actually color something that has a message that is, you know, beautifully drawn and that as an adult, you can enjoy to draw and color within the lines. <laughs> some of us color outside, some of us color inside. <laughs> You're allowed to color outside the line. Adult, if I see your stuff and it's not in the lines, I'm gonna write you. No, I'm not I'm kidding, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, a lot of adults have written me. Um, one of the best stories that I've gotten was a friend of my mom's. Unfortunately, she just passed away. And on her deathbed, she was she bought a book, and I like she actually donated to the Kickstarter. And I said to her, I was like, "Oh, who are you gonna give it to?" And because it was Christmas coming up, and she was, "Oh no, I like to color. That's my time." And so she was on her deathbed coloring, and mm -hmm. to know that it was my book was awesome. Like I was just like, "Listen, this is how someone decides to spend their last." Like that would that meant so much to me as well. So adults, if you want to go get the book. It's for us to absolutely. Yeah, I mean, because we're still little kids. I can't believe I'm going 30. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm 11 and still like, God. Keep that energy. Keep that energy. Right, right, right. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily change the older you get either. Right. Like, you right. I, get I, say, I mean, these, the hair, my, when I part my hair, there's some grays coming in, and I'm like, oh, God. But I still feel very youthful. So we're going to still continue to read the kids books and color the crayon color with the crayons and you know get our own little personal space to just zone out and have fun with these books that are coming out absolutely self-care is so important mm -hmm. yeah. i think they don't teach enough of that maybe that'll be the next book guys keep an eye out yeah uh, you never know if you guys like it Send me a little DM. <laughs> so, so each month we have been picking a theme. Um, and then our, we have some, some, some book picks of the month that fall within that theme. So this month, our theme is leadership. So is there a word or a phrase or a quote of what leadership means to you? Ooh. Wow. Because see... They didn't ask me this off camera, guys. <laughs> <laughs> on, 
the spot. Um, <laughs> leadership. Or what does leadership mean to you? Right. I think an example for me, I think I pull a lot from my own life and references. Um, I guess, like I said, my from my grandmother to my parents, even if they didn't know the right answers or know the destination, they figured it out for us in a way that they kind of guided us. And th that says something so, so strong, especially for their generations and, and for individuals that didn't have it that easy mm -hmm. um, and not being from here and being able to set their kids up in a way that they're they pretty much want the best for everyone want to move forward as well as kind of be the best that they can be I think for me that was the ultimate leadership um, there's so many individuals that let their own kind of uh ideas and how they feel about individuals or situations kind of cloud their judgment and so their kids end up growing with the same type of you know blinders on mm -hmm. to having to have parents that said you know you can be a lot you can accomplish a lot more than what I've done um and we're going to do whatever we can to set you up for that I think for me that's the ultimate leadership um I think a lot of us always want the best for the next generation or our kids or our little cousins or whoever. Um, so if we can step outside of our own little bubbles and own blinders, mm -hmm. I think that's, I don't know, is that good leadership? Good leadership. Absolutely. <laughs> you should have told me this before. <laughs> we like the on the spot. Though. I could have something like really, I could have had a quote for you, you know? <laughs> You did absolutely fabulous. <laughs> I'm like sweating now. I'm like, <laughs> so you kind of told us about some projects that you have like coming in the works, but how can people continue to um, continue to follow you, go, be able to buy Kids for Black Lives coloring book and the crayons? Um, All of it. And follow, you know. Lives dot com <laughs> go right there if you go to kids for black lives dot com it, you can I'll, and i'll send you guys all the links so you guys can put it underneath things like that but um it's we have our little e-shop on there i was so proud of it i was like working on it day and night because oh i forgot to say that once i realized i didn't want to do fashion that much anymore i decided to go into ux ui design um and i loved it and so I've been doing that like on the little side and did well in school and, and everything. And my mom was like, you just love being in school, don't you? <laughs> I, you know, Lynn from Girlfriends? I really, yes. that kind of, I'm not Lynn, but the education part where I'm just like, I just want to not have any bills and just go to school and just learn. <laughs> that is totally me. Like, <laughs> a lifelong learner. Right. right. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, I if you, if you aren't learning, you're dead. I just feel right. like so yeah. it, it's just done. I think we all can learn from everything that we're going through, especially this year. I feel like everyone's learned something this year, mm -hmm. um, whether, you know, from tragedy coming into something that we are finding out that we love to do. We would have known. I would have had an entire children's book. <laughs> one and all. But um, yeah, I think I, I, I just was like, let me go back to school. And I don't mind either. Like I was pulling a full-time day and then to working until 11 o'clock at night. My dad would come pick me up from school in Manhattan to go back to Queens. And my dad's like, I don't know why you put yourself through this. And I'm like, <laughs> love, like, love it. <laughs> right, right. Only things that you feel passionate about will you be willing to do all So, I, yeah, I built the site, and um, you guys can go on there. Let me know what you think about that. And it has the shop on there where you can get, I think we have, like, oh, I have the stickers here as well. So, you have a sticker sheet. Okay. Um, it has, like, little signs. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Little signs and little sayings on there. Um, one of them is, uh, color is not a crime. Black lives matter. Um... Uh, and a little child will lead them. Oh, leadership. See, I knew I had it. 
You just had to think it off the dome. You got it. Okay, sure. okay we got that. <laughs> I had it already printed for you guys. Anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's one of the stickers on there. And you guys can get the crayons. Um, what else we have on there? We have a bunch of stuff. But as new things come, I will constantly send out emails and let everyone know. But the book is up. Um, and we are looking at what the next book will be. I'm not 100% sure. There's a lot of different things that I've been discussing with friends of mine that wish they had a certain message when they were young or something that they're seeing with amongst their children that they're like, you know, are we still discussing this? I know, um, you know, the idea of like the color, colorism amongst our own and, and other other um, nationalities. That's been a big topic. So I don't know if that's something we should be discussing. It's like, uh, for me, I'm like, there's so many. And I think I may even do like maybe a competition or something and see hmm. if someone, yeah, right? Something like that and see different ideas and let whoever wins, you know, get a free package or something. I don't know. Nice. Actually, you know, we're, we're going to do it with you guys. We're going to do it with you guys. Yay, I love that. <laughs> See, this is all coming together. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. We're going to do a competition. We'll talk about it. We'll get back to you guys soon. And we're going to do something where you guys can, you know, write in. And whichever one we all like, we will send you guys an entire book, crayons, stickers, um, the logo sticker, and even, um, you know, a post. We have posters as well. So we'll send you that as well. So. Nice. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> Exclusive. <Yay. laughs> awesome. Luna, we are so grateful to have been able to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I've been so excited. I've been telling everybody I'm going to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's been, it's kind of surreal for me for you guys to eat like when we had our discussion before and even earlier like for you to have so much interest and and um excitement for what something that I created mm-hmm. out of pretty much despair at first <laughs> and then it turned into something else but it's amazing because a lot of us sometimes get to the point where we feel like you know like I said on this hamster wheel and our dreams can't come true and you know, you don't even know what the next dream is there waiting for you around the corner. So, yeah, absolutely. My, so how many people have you inspired just I, by sharing your story? I, listen, text me, write me, DM me, tell me your stories. I like to hear it all. I, I'm a, you know, we were on the phone for like, how? <laughs> it's, it's, I'm a talker. So, <laughs> Um, and I would love to hear other people's stories and see what affects them as well. Again, this all works for what needs to be put out, what our kids need to understand and be equipped with, you know? Um, that's, send it, send them away. But thank you guys for having me. Like, this has been amazing. I feel like I'm doing what I do best, which is talking. <laughs> but um, no, it's been a lot of fun fun and then to be you know being able to you guys to show my project off but you guys are showing so many amazing books off I have I follow you guys on Instagram and I'm like oh my god I need that book I have no children okay I have no children I have Skylar that's like my, my obviously my little cousin but I have no kids and I'm like I'm gonna have an entire library by the time they come like, Absolutely. like it's really awesome. so yeah thank you guys for having me so you can be that auntie that's always coming around with the <laughs> yeah with the book it's a book a, a book is a <laughs> I'll be the best one <laughs> <laughs> but we definitely appreciate it and like you are the type of person who we want to really make sure that like there's so much great work happening you know and we want to make sure that people actually get to see it because it is needed in the world and parents are asking and thinking about like how do they have these conversations um, with their kids and how young can they and like what are tools that they can use to actually be able to do it in like a developmentally appropriate way yeah so thank you thank you all right <laughs> so you can just like luna said you can make sure um you go to her website say it one more time luna for him 
kidsforblacklives.com kidsforblacklives.com um and once again our um, march theme is leadership and we have our march picks of the month on our website www.storiesofacolorfulworld.com go and check out our website we are coming to a an event near you. So this week we will be at Shop Small Saturdays in Brooklyn, um, 333 Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn, New York from between one and five. And we will be selling um, children's books. So come out, great food, plenty of other vendors and COVID safe. So make sure you wear your mask. Yes, <laughs> at all times, the moment you leave your door, Wear your mask. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But also, if you have not um, joined our mailing list, make sure you go to the website and also um, join our well mailing list to get um, up-to-date info on other authors, our newsletter, things like that. And we are hosting a March giveaway. So we have six books that you can win. Um, Follow Your Dreams, Little Leaders, uh, Ada Twist, Rebel Girls, Sophia Valdez, Future Press, so many great books, Mama Meaty. So go to our Instagram page and enter today. Um, the giveaway ends March 30th. So go ahead and enter today so you can get your collection of children's books. And we thank you again and... Thank you again, Luna, and we will see Luna. you next week. Thank All you right, guys. have a good one.